Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Accelerate Order to Cash Speeding Revenue Recognition with Order Process Automation webinar brought to you by Seaburger. My name is Michael Krigsman, and I'll be your moderator today. The Order to Cash process is one of the most important in business, especially in today's economy. Maintaining control and visibility into this aspect of financial is critical. In addition, a smooth order to cash process can help any organization be more responsive to customers while ensuring their satisfaction. Before we dive into the speaker introductions, I'd like to let each of you know that this event is being streamed online inside the Seaburger event platform. In the event app, you can ask and vote up the questions that you'd like for me to bring to the speaker's attention. Participants can also chat live with each other and share questions and comments directly with their social networks. The hashtag for today's event is Seaburger News, and you can tweet directly in the interface. And the spelling of that is S-E-E-B-U-R-G-E-R -E -E News, pound, hash, Seaburger News. I'm in the app myself and monitoring your feedback, so please share your thoughts. And now I'd like to introduce our speakers. Mark Chalfin is the Finance Capability Lead from Bluefin Solutions, and he's been working with SAP products for the last 15 years. He's been an end user, support desk analyst, functional consultant, and now provides strategic advice to a range of customers for a UK-based SAP consultancy. Mark is an SAP mentor, an active blogger, and a frequent contributor to the SAP community. He has deep experience in the order to cash process and has worked on a number of projects remapping processes systems. Ed Pierce is a senior solutions architect from Seaburger Incorporated, a global provider of business integration solutions. He has 15 plus years experience working with enterprise integration technologies, including ERP, business-to-business business -business integration, procurement, AP outsourcing, and document automation. Mr. Pierce has an extensive SAP background and has worked with customers like Procter & Gamble, Philip Morris, Lexmark International, The Body Shop, Accenture, and Duke University and Medical Hospital. Thank you, everyone. Now, let's get started. Mark, I'll hand it off to you. Audience, Get your questions ready now for our discussion at the end. Mark, now to you. And Mark seems to be on mute or is not talking. Hi there. Hi there, there Michael. Go. Sorry. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay. So I would just like to start to uh, the, the, the uh, session to begin with an overview of what the standard order to cash process is within uh, the SAP product suite. So um, some of you may have uh, seen this slide before. Um, the standard order to cash process would start with um, maybe a, a customer quotation where a sales team would provide a, a quotation to sell some product or service to the uh, customer, uh, and the information within a quotation will relate uh, to the uh, customer, the uh, product, the uh, price, and where the goods will be uh, shipped to. Um, not all customers start with a uh, quotation, but a uh, quotation will... Um, lead to a uh, sales order. A sales order is is uh, normally the uh, confirmation of, of the sale and will align to the receipt of a, a purchase order um, that has been received but, um, I mean, from the uh, customer. Within the uh, sales order, um, the, the uh, product will be detailed, the uh, price will be detailed, any reference will be detailed, um, and there are many ways to uh, enter the sales order. It could be that the sales order has come from a, 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 a like telephone conversation or an email or a fax or a, a web order. Once all of the information has been captured within the sales order, that can then be processed 
and where required, uh, the, the uh, goods can then be picked from a, a warehouse and the goods can be sent onwards to the uh, customer and that's seen as a, 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 a like customer delivery. Once the uh, delivery has taken place, uh, invoicing or billing will then take place. So um, the, the uh, client will send the uh, customer an invoice. That invoice could be a paper-based invoice, could be an electronic invoice, or, or, or it could be fax. In terms of um, the, the invoice, the invoice will then have a, a payment term on that, and the uh, client will expect the customer to receive the, the uh, customer to make payment based on that uh, invoice. And obviously, the uh, process will be repeated a, a number of times where customers make multiple purchases. So in terms of the standard order for cash process, the, the, the quotation and the sales order uh, capture are the start of the process. And the, the data that's captured within the sales order feeds through the process, through the uh, picking and packing of the product into the billing and, and will then focus back into the actual collections and the, the actual payment of the invoice or invoices. Throughout this process, there's lots of um, data that needs to be captured and the, the accuracy of the data is uh, essential to ensure that the process is adhered to in an efficient uh, manner. So the types of data that we can um, refer to will be, um, for argument sake, the uh, product, but a, a customer may have 500 products or may have 500,000 products. So it's important that the correct product is uh, chosen. If when the sales order is entered, the wrong product is chosen, that will then lead to a scenario that the wrong product is uh, shipped to the customer and the customer will receive their invoice, but they w will not be um, happy in, in, in their terms of the, the uh, process and therefore they will return the uh, product and they will dispute the, the uh, customer invoice. So it's essential that all of the data that's entered in the sales order is uh, accurate to ensure that the follow-on processes are uh, accurate as well. So within the order to cash uh, process, there are various system issues uh, that could occur. So where I mean, I mean, where I say system issues, I'm referring to the fact that the, that the data entered into the system will impact the uh, follow-on process. So um, most customers will provide the client a purchase order to confirm the purchase of the product. If the purchase order isn't captured within the sales order, it will it will then not be able to get uh, sent uh, and included into the invoice. And customers will turn around and say, if you don't quote our purchase order number in our invoice, then we won't pay your invoice. And they'll then ask for the invoice to be reprinted or, or a, 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 a new invoice. Um, if um, the process of uh, sales order entry is uh, not uh, efficient, then sales orders could be duplicated, which could lead to products being sent out twice, uh, which will obviously cause uh, an issue to the uh, customer, but not only to the customer, it will cause issues to the uh, client as well. Um, and pricing is a, a very big uh, factor when we come to the sales order process. So where you have a, a, a large number of uh, products, you'll probably have a, a, a product catalog where there'll be a, a standard price. But where you have multiple um, customers or many customers, it uh, could be that you provide um, different discount rates, rebate rates uh, to uh, customers so that a, a certain product 
if you bought one, the price might be $1,000, but if you bought 50, the, the price might come down to $900. So it's important to have all of that uh, information to hand in your back-end system so that the price that you agreed with the customer is the price that you enter into your sales order so that when you bill the customer, the price that the customer expects to receive is the price that they get in their invoice. Again, if the invoice is incorrect, the customer won't pay the invoice and that will increase the workload around the, the like credit collections uh, team um, and it's work that you can do without. Um, if the wrong product um, is selected, I uh, covered this earlier, but if the wrong product is uh, selected within the sales order, then the, the, the process will uh, stop and it uh, could be that the customer requires many products and if you ship four and three are right and one wrong, they may not pay for all four of the products because they need all four products together so that they can then make their products. Okay? And then the, uh, the last area to focus on will be the uh, customer. So some um, clients will have large volumes of uh, customers. So you could have 500 customers or, or you could have 500,000 customers. And the accuracy of the customer master information is uh, um, extremely important. You don't want to send out product to a, a customer that hasn't um, asked for the uh, product. So ensuring that all of the, the uh, key pieces of uh, master data within that sales order, it, it, it is um, imperative to ensure that the accuracy of the data within the sales order is 100% accurate so that all of the follow-on processes within the order to cash process will run smoothly and no extra rework is is uh, actually required. To to add some um, further detail to this, um, there are obviously uh, different industry sectors will have different pain points um, around the uh, order to cash process. So if you look at the, the like FMCG, the uh, fast moving consumer goods uh, industry, you'll uh, see that there will be large volumes of sales orders, but the volume of customers may not be that uh, great. But in terms of the types of customers, there'll be large kind of supermarkets, your, like your Walmart that will be buying um, hundreds, of, hundreds of thousands of uh, units, but then you'll also have uh, smaller customers that you know that may only be buying a uh, smaller uh, a, a smaller volume of the uh, products that you have. So you need to have a uh, order to cash process, your sales order entry process, set up so that you can receive large volumes of data from say a, a Walmart, but also to be able to take um, calls, faxes and emails from smaller customers. Um, also within FMCG, um, pricing, rebates are um, very um, important. It uh, could be that there are things called a, a, a like trade promotion where um, the, the customer has um, agreed to, to take the product from the client but there'll be a like buy one, get one free. So it's important to know the special deals that are uh, taking place and the, the like, knock-on effect to this will be around the, the warehousing uh, side where the volume of product that's required will increase where these uh, like deals are uh, taking place. If we look at a, uh, a different industry, if we look at the like, manufacturing industry, the actual value of the sales orders may be higher than in the, the like, FMCG. Um, in terms of your customer base, they'd be more traditional, so perhaps the volume of customers that would look to use EDI may not be as uh, high. 
uh, and the uh, channels of uh, sales order capture would be more traditional in terms of phone calls, maybe um, sales rep visiting, uh, you know, the uh, customer and uh, so on. Um, and the, the third industry that I have uh, picked out would be the uh, kind of media industry. So that could be something like um, um, the, the uh, production of, of uh, newspapers or, or, or of uh, like DVDs and movies and, and uh, so on. Um, the, the, the amount of products that these um, clients have are much higher and the uh, customer base will also be quite high. Uh, they'll have a combination of uh, order channels, so they'll be B2B, like business to business sales, but they'll also be business to consumer sales. Uh, and the, the uh, data integrity of the uh, product is, uh, is uh, very high. So if you look at the, the, the like book market, um, each book has its own um, product ID. Uh, and there will be large publishers that will have hundreds of thousands of uh, products. So it's uh, important that the right product is uh, selected. Okay, so in terms of how we can uh, rectify this, the, the uh, single recommendation that I give all um, customers is to try to adopt a, uh, a uh, like right first-time approach. Um, I think that it's uh, very important that if you get the data right first time, then you haven't got to worry about the the the, the uh, kind of sub processes where you're correcting data. So if you get your sales orders correct, your deliveries will be correct, and your invoicing will be correct, and the process to collect cash will be easier to manage. So if, if you follow a, a right first time approach, the um, business involvement to fix issues will reduce. The, the, the uh, IT requirement to fix the issues will be reduced. Um, and the, the actual knock on effect will be seen within the uh, credit control uh, department. So invoices will be paid quicker um, which will improve the uh, cash flow of the uh, organization. But not only that, the effort within the actual credit control team will reduce. The amount of credit notes that will be sent to customers will reduce. So it's uh, important to follow the, uh, the right first time approach. And by doing so, the uh, benefits that the business can achieve are quite considerable. So in terms of um, best practice, I think that it's uh, very important to understand what, uh, what best practice actually is. So the, the kind of first point, you know, that I would uh, raise is that you need a, a, a common process or common processes for data entry. So having a, a, a small team where the the like, level of manual involvement in raising and um, approving sales orders is uh, is uh, small will lead to a reduction in that uh, error. So a uh, highly skilled team to manage the process and having common processes um, across different business units will enable um, the uh, process to become more smooth. Having a uh, central team, so it, it, it could be that you run across um, just like different regions, so it, it could be that if you're based in uh, America, that rather than having uh, like, an, like an Eastern team and a Western team, but to have a single team based in a single location to manage all of your sales order entry processing. Um, and that could be for your different business units. It, it uh, could be that you also work in uh, Canada or in South America or even Europe. So having central teams to to uh, manage the process will reduce the the uh, you know the actual risks 
and uh, and it will also create a uh, process that is um, more robust. The quality of data is um, extremely important. So not only the data that's entered into the sales order, but the master data that is used within the system. So where you have large volumes of customers, having a slick process to create customers and to identify duplications is, uh, is, uh, is an important process to uh, manage. Um, in terms of the, the uh, kind of pricing and pricing catalog, it's important to have that up to date. There's no point a, a sales rep offering a price that isn't valid. If the system uses a catalog, a, a pricing catalog, and the sales rep isn't using that price, the price that he's going to quote will be different to the price that SAP will generate, which will then lead to an error. So that there needs to be alignment between the actual price that the system is going to create and the price that we're offering the uh, customer. Um, so by following those um, key principles, you should then be able to reduce the effort, both in terms of manual effort in the creation of the sales orders, but also the manual effort in the the changing of the sales orders or the actual correction of those um, sales orders. Um, it's vitally important to focus on the upstream process due to the impact that the that the sales orders will have downstream. So. By making a mistake in a sales order will always lead to issues in the like credit collections piece. So if, if you can get a, a, a high percentage of uh, accuracy in terms of your sales order creation, the amount of um, time spent in the credit collection uh, area will then reduce. So in terms of the areas that um, I was going to cover, um, I'm now going to hand over to Ed, who can provide some insight how um, these uh, issues can be tackled. That's great. This is uh, Michael, the moderator. Thanks so much, Mark. We appreciate your comments. Audience, in the online app, you can see uh, questions that are being asked. Please vote them up or down because at the end, we're going to answer the top questions that are voted up. Now we turn to Ed Pierce from Seaburger. Ed, stage is yours. All right. Thank you very much. Um, so, Ed, Mark, thank you for that summary. And uh, I think I'm going to pick up there with um, some solution, a solution that Seaburger offers uh, that's designed very much to avoid the upstream problems uh, that you may have with with your sales order data. Um, I, I'd like to start here with uh, just some benchmarking data that talks about um, the way that different orders are handled. So if you look at the methods for, for handling orders, um, Zebra has long been in the business of, uh, of EDI, and if you look at the graph that we're showing here, even even the the EDI approach is is something that companies will adopt for perhaps their their higher volume customers. Um, they they may have orders that come through the web to account for a certain volume. But what's astonishing is that there is still, and as Mark described, there's still a significant amount of order processing that is done in some type of manual fashion. Um, Sometimes it may be just a manual translation from one system to another where where a, a customer service agent is, is looking at data on one screen, keying an, an order into um, into a, an order system. But uh in other times you've got you've got physical mail, probably not as common these days, but frequently you've got fax uh orders where companies are accustomed to um, sending out orders via fax, and the result is that you have unstructured data that, that is coming in that needs to be uh, structured. And as Mark was talking about, getting it right upstream, um, these manual data processes lend themselves to lots of error. And so 
Um, what we're going to talk about today is, is an approach to minimizing the amount of error that's introduced in, in the upstream um, sales order handling process. So if you look at a typical company, um, we, we've got an SAP-centric uh, picture here, but if you look at the way that orders make their way into SAP, we've, we've boiled this down really to uh, three potential sources, some type of fax, paper, unstructured document, uh, a, a source perhaps from a web front end, a uh, storefront, and of course EDI, um, EDI documents coming in down in an automated fashion. So with those three sources, they, they find their way into SAP in a couple of different ways. Um, the structured EDI data and to some extent web-based storefront data uh, typically runs through an EDI platform and into SAP via IDOC processing. Um, by contrast, uh, something like a fax, uh, a paper-based order, would be handled by most likely some type of customer service representative, some type of order processor, and, and ultimately find its way into the system that way. If you look at the right side of the screen here, the issue is that if there are errors, and, and Mark described a lot of them in his summary, if there are errors here, um, the errors in the case of an EDI-based uh, automated order are routed kind of to one type of person or resource, and errors related to uh, the business or a sales rep um, are routed to another type of resource. And often there has to then be collaboration. If it's an EDI order uh, that experiences a problem, then they need that that person may need to go to a sales uh, knowledgeable salesperson regarding item or item catalog or pricing. And, and there's this back-end collaboration where, where the two need to resolve any inbound errors for the order. Um, so the, what this introduces is, number one, you've got two different parties that are, are attempting to solve issues related to inbound orders. And you've got collaboration among those parties in order to make sure that the, or, that the sales order gets posted accurately in the system. So... In, in this particular um, scenario, we, we pose a number of questions. So do you ha how high is your error rate uh, for incoming sales orders? Do you, do you have visibility of those orders? If, if, um, if a customer service rep is trying to enter an order and is missing a piece of information, uh, does that order remain in the system, or do they have to st stop the order entry process, perhaps, park a document or just exit the, the order entry process altogether until they resolve the issues. Um, you know, how are those errors handled? Are errors for automated orders handled differently than errors for uh, orders that come in through a paper-based process? Um, does the, what are your service delivery levels? Do you have different response times based on uh, the way that the, the order makes its way into the system? And finally, what's the, what's the processing time for a single sales order? Uh, do you find that there are um, different processing times between, say, your EDI inbound orders and your uh, unstructured data orders that are coming in? So all of these things are, are, are often present, or some, some subset of these things are often present when talking about um, the handling of orders where you've got multiple methods of entry, and you've got issues that arise with each each different method of order entry. So these are the things that that Seaburger, as a software development company, is is looking to solve. Um, and so I'm going to take just a moment to to look uh, in a little more detail. Mark um, positioned this at the very beginning of his comments, uh, where when you look at the posting of, and processing of an order in SAP. Uh, th there are a number of different things that are going on. Uh, I guess the the first thing is that um, in, in all of this, we ask the question, does the system have enough data to complete uh, the sales order? And uh, so on the, the entry portion, you've got to enter the order, and then you, do you have the right material numbers, customer numbers, all of those 
master data validations that have to go on, and there are potential checks, there are uh, availability checks, there are uh, delivery date checks that the system is going to do uh, internally before it can confirm that that order uh, is valid and can be posted. Um, and then finally, there there are um, methods for processing, uh, could be customer credit checks, could be uh, some type of approval processes internally uh, prior to releasing that order for subsequent processing by um, picking and delivery and, and the other activities that, that Mark had mentioned. So in all of these cases, in order to, to get from one step to the next, um, if anything goes wrong, for example, a customer master record, um, if you key in the wrong customer number or you key in the wrong item number or uh, the date is inconsistent with the availability of the inventory, um, in each of those cases, whether that order comes in uh, by via a customer service rep keying it into the SAP interface, or whether um, whether that comes in via an automated fashion, but then throws a red flag and and fails to process because one of the validity checks uh, or availability check failed or something of that nature. Um, either way, you've got an exception process to deal with, and so and that's why you see these long chevrons in the middle of the slide where you've got both um, customer communication potentially involved in the case of of problems or discrepancies, and you've also got cross-departmental collaboration uh, that I mentioned a couple of slides before, where you've got different departments. They may be a technical department and a functional department uh, that need to collaborate in order to to uh, speed up the processing and the order. So um, what Seaburger has positioned here is a solution that really addresses uh, all of these uh, these potential Number one, the different work streams that could be going on, as well as the the ability to um, queue up the orders, put them in a central console, um, regardless of their source, so that you can minimize the amount of um, the amount of extra work that takes place in the event that you have exceptions uh, in your ordering process. We'll talk about that in a little more detail as we move move forward. Just a, a brief positioning of uh, the Seaburger business suite. Uh, order to cash is one component in a broader array of um, products and services that Seaburger office offers related to business integration. And so this is an overview slide that um, kind of positions where uh, our business integration server sits uh, typically in between um, external parties to your company and your ERP environment. Um, and in this case, we're talking about relationships between customers and end-to-end -end monitoring of uh, order information as it flows through the order to cash process. Uh, Seaburger offers broader solutions uh, with regard to the supply chain and, and other types of uh, integration solutions, but uh, we, I just wanted to take a moment to, to position where this fits into the overall Seaburger business integration suite. So if we look at the, the solution as it lines up with um, solving issues related to the incoming sales order, um, the idea here is that, that you're monitoring inbound documents regardless of, of their, their source. So we're putting together in a single console um, a monitoring solution inside of the SAP environment that is, is looking at EDI as well as unstructured data uh, in the form of paper or PDF or TIFF, fax, whatever um, type of image might be rendered by those other unstructured methods. And the, the process um, receives images of documents and then interprets those documents in, in the case of unstructured data. Uh, there's an interpretation method that's extracting that data um, and putting the data into a structured document uh, that's similar to you would handle in an EDI scenario. Ultimately, documents are going to have to become an IDOC in SAP 
And so the receiver of the order to cash solution is extracting data from documents, um, interpreting that data, and then in the ideal case um, where you've got clean data, and as we, we've heard earlier, if you've taken care of um, the, the validity of the data up front, the ideal scenario is that order is received and is automatically posted uh, in the SAP environment. And it means that it passes all of the checks that it needs to. It means that all the data is valid. And and the, the way that the system is designed to function is that order can be processed without anyone having to intervene with that process. However, uh, there are going to be certainly cases where the, the data that the customer is sending may not be complete. Uh, and so you want a uniform, centralized process for handling those those situations. Uh, in this case, there is Seaburger provides workflow, which is uh, is developed and and deployed in the SAP environment um, to handle those discrepancies and route those discrepancies to uh, the the necessary uh, individuals within the organization. Um, so. I, what, what we're illustrating with this slide is that, that ideally uh, the target as you improve your upstream processes is hands-free processing, whether that's an EDI order or whether that is a, a paper order where we have uh, applied artificial intelligence and, and optical character recognition to extract data. Uh, the objective is to extract that data, uh, form an accurate document that can be posted as a sales order, and process that all hands-free. So in, in the Seaburger Order to Cash solution, the objective is, is to um, support a transparent process, one in which you've got a single place to go uh, to, to not only report on, but to um, have central visibility of the orders that are passing through the system. Once again, um, doesn't matter if those orders come in through an electronic uh, electronic route or whether they come in through some type of paper route or a fax server and that image is ultimately converted but what you have is complete visibility of in the minute that that image is presented to the system you've got a copy of it uh, you've got traceability to show what the source was and then you've got a, a full record of how that document was then interpreted trans translated into a sales order passed all the validations and, and posted in, in the target environment. Um, like I said, if, as you line all of those things up, uh, the, the best objective or the best result that you can get is that you fully automate that process or you put in, in place uh, the steps that enable you to fully automate that process. Um, for those items that uh, have their discrepancies, the workflow is, is there to catch and route those discrepancies so that the right people are notified at the right time uh, and, and you don't have orders that are held up, perhaps sitting on a desk waiting for the right person uh, to collaborate with someone else to perhaps get a master record created. Uh, all of those things are accomplished through a streamlined workflow solution where uh, if there's data missing, then that can be automatically routed to the person who's capable of addressing the issue, and the order process can remain uninterrupted. Um, this entire solution is, um, is deployed in the SAP environment. So the, the user interface for all of this is in the same SAP GUI um, that your SAP community is accustomed to using. So from a, a look feel, form, function perspective, uh, all of this resides in, in the SAP environment. Uh, so it's very familiar, a low learning curve, and, um, and one of the unique things about it is it puts in, in a central environment um, both the visibility of your standard EDI processes as well as the unstructured paper fax PDF sources of, of sales order data. 
So um, if we look a little more at the details of uh, what the solution supports in terms of validation for automated posting, there's some flexibility in the solution that enables you uh, to customize and determine what it is that you want the system to to check and validate. Now, for those who are familiar with an SAP environment, um, the, you know that there are built-in, there's a great deal of functionality with regard to um, validity checks, availability checks, um, date validation available to promise, all of those types of things. And those differ from customer to customer, from company to company. And so the uh, the Seaburger application supports the ability to customize those checks so that if you want the Seaburger application to leverage those same validations that your sales order processing programs would do, um, those can be done before the IDOC is, is posted or before the, the sales order is attempted to be posted. Um, configurable options allow you to determine if you want to raise red flags sooner rather than later in order to correct problems further upstream. Uh, this puts an application in front of the SAP, uh, actual SAP posting, uh, that it gives you a little flexibility to determine whether you want to have a posted document in the SAP environment that then needs to be fixed or whether you want to hold off on that and manage the, the details before posting it at which point you can post a document and it moves uh, through the system without any issues. So if we if we look just at a, a quick example here, you've got a small screenshot here uh, of what the processing center looks like. And as you can see in, in this case, or I hope you can see uh, from an online perspective, but uh, what you're seeing is a screenshot with uh, on the left-hand side, you have an image of an order document, and on the right-hand side, you've got an SAP screen with that, the data that has been extracted from that document already populated in the SAP screen. Now, if, if the application had absolutely everything that it needed, um, you likely wouldn't be looking at, at this screen. Uh, the, the document would be able to, to flow without any interruption and be posted uh, as a sales order, and then the remaining SAP downstream functions would kick in. However, if there are issues with that order, if there's something uncertain about it, if perhaps there was no delivery date recognized, for example, um, then the, the system will provide in the orders overview this screen that you're looking at here, which gives you a, a couple of things. Um, number one, it can present not only um, your, your unstructured documents, but you can view your EDI documents the same way. If it's an EDI document where all the data comes in uh, electronically and there is no physical document, those documents are represented in a PDF format. Uh, so on the left-hand side, you would see uh, a representation of your EDI data. And again, on the right-hand side, um, you would see that data populated in all the fields that are going to ultimately be posted as a sales order in SAP. Uh, you've got full split-screen capability here so that if you had a, a CSR um, monitoring uh, one of the, uh, a workstation, you could split two monitors and put the SAP monitor on the right and the document on the, on the left. And, uh, and, and you can simply by clicking on a given field and dragging your mouse around items on the left-hand side, pull data off the document into your SAP, uh, into the SAP order screen. Um, from this point forward, you can link or branch to your standard SAP transaction. So it may be you discover that you need to extend the customer record or you need to, uh, you need to extend the material master record for a certain plant that, that didn't have it before. There are links from this order screen into all of the standard, uh, uh relevant SAP transactions. Uh, again, this is Seaburger product that's delivered as a transport in the SAP environment. Um, you know, provides you with this order console as as well as a high level order entry ledger, uh, so that you can have an overview, a searchable um, filter, if you will, 
for reviewing the orders in the queue that need to be processed. Um, and then all of this is, is sitting on top of a workflow foundation that if you, if there are errors or issues where these documents can't be correctly posted, uh, they're dispatched and handled according to the rules of I'm in your workflow configuration. So just to recap some of the, the benefits here, uh, we've talked a little bit about uh, transparency as a benefit. You've got complete visibility uh, into the, the sales order processing history. Uh, you've got a ledger where you can search not only across the paper-based unstructured orders, but also your EDI-based orders. Uh, you've got visibility of all of that activity uh, under under a single search. Um, and so you're, you're providing from two different, two or three different inbound methods, you've got a single, single point of visibility for uh, finding and reviewing the details of those documents. From a compliance perspective, uh, you can, um, you've got the ability to meet compliance requirements, you've got archiving such that even if the order uh, originates on a piece of paper, uh, the image of, of that paper is stored with the document that is posted uh, in the order to cash solution, and that document will always remain as an attachment to the final sales order. So you've got not only visibility of those documents coming in, uh, but you have the ability to recall the original image uh, in the event that you need to, uh, to refer back to that original source of, of the data. Um, all of the roles and authorizations that would typically be in place with regard to um, user settings and user authorizations are still uh, preserved in, in this uh, application. So if you've got concerns about uh, certain access to certain organizational elements or certain um, sales organizations and the like, those are all going to be preserved in the context of the receiver solution. Um, and then from an efficiency perspective, really, uh, Mark talked a lot about having centralized common processes and, and to some degree this is, this is what this solution is focused on, is providing a, uh, a single point for uh, people from different parts of the organization, whether they be from the business uh, or whether they be from the, the technical side, to have a single place to uh, address discrepancies. And, um, and to respond rapidly to customer, customer requirements. And finally, the, the, from a cost perspective, you've got uh, something to streamline your order process, um, rapidly recoup your, your investment. Um, you've got a product that really has seamless integration, uh, with the SAP environment, there's no specific SAP industry solution that is required. Uh, often you'll hear about uh, SAP solutions that uh, are based on uh, SAP retail or an SAP, uh, some, some specific industry solution. Um, none of those are required in this case. Um, you know, this is something that can be rolled out quickly with a pre-configured solution. It comes with a standard implementation guide with uh, pre-delivered um, configuration settings. Um, and from a customer service perspective, uh, I think um, Mark has touched on most of this, but, but the objective here is, is to streamline what it is that uh, your ability to re respond to inbound customer orders. So, um, you know, the result being excellent customer service, rapid response to customer issues, and um, to reliably meet your, your customer service level requirements. Hey, Ed, this is Michael. We're, this is a time check. You're going to have to start to wrap up now, or we won't, won't have time for questions. Okay. Well, great. Well, um, I, I think I'm nearing the end of my slide. I think this is my last slide, which is, is just uh, a recap for the benefits of, of uh, doing business with Seaburger. As I've said, we're, we're um, a single-source solution that provides complete control with not only document recognition, but marrying together uh, the EDI document visibility and 
tight integration with the SAP environment. Um, as a company, Seabuilder has over 25 years' experience uh, in, in B2B and process integration with uh, over 8,800 customers around the world. Um, we've got both industry and cross-module expertise in SAP. We've had a long history of, of development um, in SAP and um, marry that with uh, specific market and industry expertise in, in uh, over 15 different vertical markets. And um, so really the, the solution that we've described today is, is um, an extension of the, the SAP business-to-business -business integration suite and something that we hope, uh, hope our, our customers and those listening on the call can, can benefit from a little more information about uh, speeding, um, speeding their ore processing uh, in the order of cash scenario. Great. I won't dwell on this since we're running out of time. I've just got to uh, cycle through. And I think there we are, Michael, at the uh, Q&A discussion page. Great. Uh, Ed Pierce from Seaburger, thank you so much for that very interesting presentation. Now let's turn our attention to questions. Audience, if you look at the online app, you'll see at the top, uh, the top of the middle section, it says questions asked. And if you click there, then all the questions that have been asked so far will pop up, and you can vote up and down. So right at the top, we see the question, do you need to create customer-specific templates to map incoming orders? Gentlemen, either one of you, please jump in and take that one on. I'll take that one. Um, the, the quick answer is no. Um, the tech Technology underlying this from a recognition perspective is is called uh, freeform recognition, and so the the, the entire um, basis of freeform recognition is that uh, some of the earlier technology with with regard to um, with regard to document recognition uh, was based on templates, and so you had to essentially draw a physical or create a physical map of where you expected the data to come on an order and tell it where the header was and where the line items would be and where to look for the address and things like that. Um, the freeform technology uh, was specifically designed so that you wouldn't have to spend time customer by customer uh, defining a map. Uh, what the freeform technology is doing is searching for keywords there's an already a knowledge base built where it knows uh, certain norms with regard to the recognition of where line items would be, uh, knows that uh, it evaluates the probability of where certain fields are, so there is no need to predefine any templates um, based on this technology. Great. Thank you very much. Mark, let me uh, toss one out to you, which is the next question in the list there. What are some of the challenges in implementing an order to cash process? Okay, so this is uh, Mark uh, here. So I think the biggest challenge is a, is a single word, and that is um, integration. So we need to integrate data, we need to integrate people, and we need to integrate the process. So the process will touch on many different areas within a business. So sales order capture, um, the actual delivery process, the picking and packing within a warehouse. So you'll have the sales community, you'll have the plant community, you know, within a warehouse, and then you'll also have the finance community in terms of um, creation of uh, invoicing and collection of uh, cash. So it's uh, quite hard to align all of those requirements for those different stakeholders within your business to ensure that the process runs smoothly. So the m message that I started with is, is uh, around right first time and focusing on the upstream activity. So if you get the sales order process right in an efficient way, then the other processes should 
follow their own processes and um, not have the, the kind of errors that you could um, expect. So in terms of uh, order to cache, what I would then focus on would be the sales order capture process and say that if you get that right, then the other processes have um, a, a fighting chance of that being right. Where you get those wrong, those other processes, the process may be right, but the outcome will be incorrect. So you can have great processes to pick goods from a warehouse, great processes to do your invoicing, and great processes to, to collect the uh, cash. But if the data that's being fed up from the upstream process is uh, incorrect, the, the, the process will be correct, but the outcome and the actual data will be uh, incorrect. So, Ed, uh, these are some important points. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit on what Mark had said, and maybe, again, what are some of the challenges that you see and, and share some of your advice and experience for creating a smooth deployment and smooth well, outcomes, I, I think, smooth results? I, I think one thing that, that uh, can't be stressed enough is, is even with the deployment of, of a technology solution, um, is, is a focus on on process and a, and a focus on uh, what is it that we are trying to automate. And um, I think very similar to, to what Mark has said, uh, similar vein, you know, if you, you can automate a bad process and then you just do bad a lot more quickly. Give us an um, example. Give us an example. Well, uh, for example, if if um, if the process for correcting uh, an inbound order is to create a new customer record, um, and that process doesn't include any type of validation with uh, you know a central party that's in, that's responsible for customer master data, um, then every time you, you have a potential issue, what you eventually are building up as a, a big master data problem where you've got 20 records for the same customer. Um, and each of those records then runs the, the risk of having inconsistent data uh, with another um, until you introduce into your, into your organization, um, you know, a, a problem that if, even if you automated the process of creating a new customer, um, that would just enable you to create new customer records faster. And the real, the real focus there should be to define correct processes first, um, for, and, and then put in a technology solution that enables you to execute on, on solid business processes rather, rather than, than, uh, you know, continuing to, uh, perpetuate old, old habits that introduce error into the system. Well, well there, this is Michael. There's, there's certainly no doubt that with every type of enterprise deployment, if you focus very specifically on the business task at hand and then make the, tech, the technology match and support those goals and put metrics into play, then your likelihood of being successful and having an outcome that's desirable and favorable certainly will increase. Sounds like that's what you're saying. Absolutely. Well, let's let's jump on to another question. We have just a few minutes left. What happens if there is not enough information to post the order automatically in SAP? Uh, yeah. So that the the um, the result there. This is where you you've got a solution that the workflow kicks in and um, and and enables you to guide um, the resolution of that issue in a much more predictable fashion. Um, so uh, to contrast that, uh, what we see a lot of times in, um, in companies that are uh, running an, an SAP environment and are processing EDI is that um, if there is not enough data in an EDI order uh, or if there is incorrect data in an EDI order, um, that typically fails at the IDOC processing stage. 
And often the person who is receiving an I, a failed IDOC message is not necessarily the person who is familiar with the customer or the materials involved or any of that. They, they tend to be more of a technical nature. Um, and so this is where um, Seaburger's solution is by putting not only the, the technical, the EDI um, processing, IDOC processing, um, all in, in the same environment in a central console, um, you can put that data in front of the people uh, who are familiar with what might be missing in the order. They can look at the order and they can say, oh, I see that the, the customer number that they provided is, is their customer number, but it doesn't agree with ours. Mm -hmm. um, and when you have everything, when you have the right people accessing the information at the right point, at the point of failure, um, you can address those problems a lot more efficiently. Great. Well, I want to thank Mark Chalpin from Bluefin Solutions and Ed Pierce from Seaburger for these great presentations. Unfortunately, we are out of time, and I'd like to thank everybody who joined us today. All the, reg all the registrants will receive a follow-up email with a link to the recording. Every question that was asked today will live on the Seaburger event platform as an individual web page. So be sure to visit uh, events.seaburger.com to keep the conversation going. And I wish everybody a great day. Thanks so much. Bye now.